evening, everyone. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Victor Bryson. I reside in Dobbinville with my wife for 46 years, Alice Bryson. My main reason for running for council is because I've been very upset with the direction our town has gone where all say of the people have been taken from. This comprehensive plan that was put together in 2020 has literally put handcuffs on you people. These contractors have the right to come in here and build what they want and you have no say over it. I am here to push for a change in our comprehensive change plan and our zoning ordinance that would restrict any more multi-family buildings from being built in the city of Newcastle. You people have the right to do it and you have the power to do it. You must force council to move forward with this now because you have no time left. Living Proof is a 7th Street project which will go forward. You have no way to stop it because of your 2020 comprehensive plan. You people must come together and you must force council to make change to the comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance or you will have no say over what goes on in this town. They have the power to tear down the old Mitchell's property and build apartments. They can tear down anything in the gateway they want and build apartments. If the, if the, where the Port of Pinos is, is not owned from the trustees of common. They can sell it to a developer, tear it down, build apartments, and you have no say over it. And that's straight facts. You need change, and I'm asking you to come forward and make it happen before it's too late. You have to start now or you're going to lose. You still have a chance and you have every right in the world to do this. This is your town and you do not want to surround this town in apartment building. You will fail in the end. Thank you. Next is Ethan Port. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Ethan Quirk. Um, in the time that I've lived in Newcastle, I've come to learn a lot about the city's past and future, its residents and its businesses. I've come to consider these people my neighbors and more importantly, my friends, for whom I consult, engage, and brainstorm with on a daily basis. Some of my earliest childhood memories revolve around this city and Battery Park. My mother would bring us over the bridge to play along the various banks and trails. The sheer excitement while heading over here was in indescribable. After all, compared to the farms and cornfields of South Jersey, Old Newcastle struck me as the coolest town in the world. Years later, I returned as an adult, and I can vividly re recall my first interaction with the bartender at Jessup's. I told her, man, I really love this town, but I'm sure you hear that all the time. Her playful chuckle and head nod led me to believe that Old Newcastle was Delaware's best kept secret, and I was determined to reside here one way or another. My work as a chef has, at various establishments and companies from Charlie Square to Delaware Park to the banks at Reed's Way helped me to mold, helped to mold me early on into someone who values the importance of hard work and really enjoying what you do. I then pivoted professionally to work for the restaurant store where I've spent a few years as at the Newcastle branch as a sales manager, connecting with small business owners, and then I grew into my current role as the company's field marketing manager where I lead a growing team of 15 people in five states, including Florida. Florida. Part of my job is listening. Listening and really understanding the struggles and concerns that our customers experience. These people are pillars of their communities and walking examples of the American dream. I also teach and lead classes on the importance of emotional intelligence and having radical candor. I would not be able to do my job without the right amount of cooperation and collaboration with the staff and my coworkers. If elected, I plan to apply these principles and skills towards everything I face while I am on, on council. I plan to give my generation of future residents and homeowners a voice here in Newcastle. I currently feel a bit underrepresented and like many of you, detached from the inner workings of the city. So let's work together to fix that. Thanks. Good evening, my name is William Robinette. I'm a lifelong resident of Newcastle. I'm also a 38 member of the Google Fire Company. Um, also a former city employee and currently a Colonial School District employee. I'm working for the residents of Newcastle because I'm tired of all the buildings that are going up and I agree totally percent with Victor. 
We need to stop with these buildings and departments and give back to the residents because it's our city. Thank you. Next is Mr. Rick Schiller. Hey, Mike Black, can you hear me? I can. Then I won't use this. Um, hi, my name is Rick Schiller. I uh, migrated to Newcastle from Dover in 1988. And the reason I did that was I worked in Camden, New Jersey, and I wanted to get as close to that bridge without living in New Jersey as I could. So Newcastle was that place. Uh, I've enjoyed uh, 35 plus years here in Newcastle, and I've served on the Colonial School Board for uh, several of those years, and I'm running for City Council because I have an interest in public service, giving back to the community, and I'm actually honored to be up here with all these people here that could probably serve as well as I could, or even better if I'm one of the people that serve with them. So. Um, I appreciate your time here listening to me. Have a great evening. Thank you. Next is Ms. Suzanne Sauter. Good evening. Um, thanks for coming out tonight. Newcastle's fortunate to have many residents who care about what happens. Some small towns have trouble finding enough people to run for elected office. We have seven people running for three seats. We may not agree on all issues, but we're all interested and involved. I've been honored to serve on city council for the past four years, and I'm seeking re-election to remain part of our search for the best solutions to the various issues that we face. I'm especially proud of the work done so far by the Sea Level Rise Task Force, which was established at my initiative last year. There are tasks include reviewing prior studies, recommending solutions, researching available grants to cover the rather large cost of flood protection, and providing information to residents about protecting their own property. It includes residents from various parts of the city that are especially vulnerable to flooding. I'd like to remain on council to see their work through to completion. If re-elected, I will encourage council to save the remaining $2 million of our ARPA money, which some people refer to as COVID relief. Um, fun. I'd like to save those funds until we know our share of the costs for this flood protection. If it turns out we're fortunate enough to get grants to cover the full cost, the money will still be in the bank and we can find other things to do with it. Meanwhile, we'll get the interest on it. Um, during my time in council, I've tried to be a calm and thoughtful voice. I listen to all sides of the issues before us, and I try to gather facts before making decisions. If re-elected, I plan to continue working in the same way. I've also tried to increase public knowledge of council's work by preparing and sending notes on all regular and many special council meetings to anyone who asks for them. I've received a lot of positive feedback on those notes, so I plan to continue this if I'm reelected. And so finally, I hope you'll listen to all of us tonight and decide which three you'd like to represent you on council. Thank you. Right, next up is Mr. Andrew Zelt. Before I hand it over, uh, we've had a request from those watching online that everyone please make sure to use the microphone because it definitely does make a difference for them. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Zelt. Um, thank you for coming tonight. This crowd's amazing. So we need people to get more involved and everyone here is out listening to us and this is impressive. So thank you for coming out tonight. I'd like to thank Matt for actually putting this on. So this is a great forum for doing this. So I'm from East 6th Street. Um, we definitely have a traffic situation in our town. Uh, we definitely uh, we have tractor trailers. We have our traffic coming through. We have the light situation. So I think we need to be working with our representatives within the town. Uh, we need to be working with uh, Senator Poor. We need to be working with Mimi. Uh, we need to be working with others since it is a, a state road. So there's things that we need to take into consideration. 
So I've been here seven years. Um, I came to Delaware in 1996 for MBNA, and um, I found this uh, area right away. Um, I've used the park, the restaurants, the stores. It is an amazing community, and I want to definitely help out. So, um, one thing is, I'm not a politician. I'm a volunteer. I do a lot of volunteering within this comp uh, all over the place. Um, I help out dogs, I help out the food bank, Easter Seals. Um, I'm out to help out the community. This is my next step in helping out the community by getting involved and running for council. So one thing I've done, um, this past weekend I did 42,000 steps. I got my Fitbit on, so it was all blocked. I've been knocking on doors, talking to people, and I've been listening. And um, it's very uh, impressive. Uh, people want change, and I've been listening for some of those items. And just in that listening, so some of the things I like to do, it's gonna sound funny, and I know I have a bunch of dogs, um, but there are people that want a dog park. I kind of live a dog park, but people want a dog park. They've been talking about this in council for over three years, I think, and it has not moved. So I think it would be great if we could get a task force, get people involved, figure out what we need to pull it together, any rules, benches, all that good stuff. If we get the people involved, it would be great. Another thing in listening, um, people want information. Our website is not the greatest. Trying to find something on our website is very difficult. So I want to get all you involved. We want to get, uh, I think we should get a task force to review our uh, website, figure out how we can improve it to make it easier for people to get to the information that they need. Thank you very much. Hi everybody, uh, for those I have not had a chance to meet yet, uh, my name is Nerman Zubaka, I live on the West Fifth Street with my wife, my daughter, they're here in attendance, uh, and our dog, uh, it's good that she's not here. <laughs> um, I would like to use the opportunity to thank the New Council City Topics, uh, the weekly, and the senior center staff for allowing us to uh, use this platform to you know, talk about ourselves. Uh, you know, pu publish the answers to your questions in the weekly. Last week, uh, it really does mean a lot to us to, to be able to provide that information to you. Um, I, I fundamentally support this type of transparency and a community engagement. So, so one of the things, if elected, I, I would definitely support. Uh, you know, even more transparency from the city and and try to try to engage. You know, people's feedback as much as we can and try to engage people as much as we could. Um, I would like to thank you guys uh, for posing all the questions, tough questions as we meet you guys on the street, as we knock on your door. It's been great to learn about you, your expertise, you know, how long you've been here, what you have done, but also, you know, challenging us with your questions has been great, at least uh, to me, to, to learn, you know, about shaping, you know, I, I came with, you know, to this with some, some topics in mind, but you know, you guys helped shape uh, a lot of the priorities as well just by talking to you, so thank you. Um, the, in fact, you know, Community engagement has been one of the driving factors for, for me, you know, throwing my name in a hat uh, for this. Uh, two years ago, a group of neighbors, you know, got together to talk about, you know, um, how can we help, you know, um, improve our playground, right, uh, for kids in, in town. And we were, you know, some of the things, we set priorities, wanted to be fun, we wanted to be, you know, accessible for all ages, but also for all demographics, so students with disabilities can access to it, right, and things like that, that currently is not the case. And I'm happy to share that two years from now, uh, uh, we have been able to sign just last week uh, a contract to get a playground equipment <coughs> updated for Battery Park that once again will include equipment and pathways for kids with disabilities, but also have more, more program for kids of all ages. That just, um, I'm using this as a metaphor that I'm just not gonna um, try to run things for, you know, because I'm running for this because, you know, my motives are for my kid, but really just to showcase that I will look, you know, holistically at every every issue. So, so we're not, you know, trying to exclude anybody from from decision making process. So there will be some, you know, projects that you may be benefiting from more, some some less. But ultimately, you know, the goal will be to to make sure that all residents can be proud of our town. Um, so my priorities are the following: I want to ensure public safety. I want to support strategic investments uh, in infrastructure, economic growth that will support all the residents as well as the businesses. Um, so this. Is what you ice cream, <laughs> sorry. Um, 
uh, want to celebrate the diversity um, and rich history of Newcastle uh, by promoting and supporting uh, various events and community uh, uh, in town um, and create a platform uh, for thoughtful conversations about long-term city planning to ensure workability and sustainability of our city. Thank you. prior to tonight's event uh, to jump right into something that is on the front of uh, mind for a lot of folks in town, as evidenced by several questions we received, uh, on the topic of development. Uh, to take one question we got that is representative of a couple, and this is going to be to each of you with one minute to respond. We'll pass the mic right down the line. Would you support an indefinite moratorium on high-density occupancy construction, limiting all development to townhouses and single-family homes? Please explain your thoughts around the issue. Say that again. <laughs> Would you support an indefinite moratorium on high-density construction, limiting all development to townhomes and single-family houses? Talk about well, I would definitely support that because that's the whole purpose of changing the comprehensive plan and the, uh, the zoning uh, ordinance. If you change the uh, comprehensive plan and the zoning ordinance, like I tell you, you can do what you say. You can make them bring single family so You'll be in charge of that. Thank you. So I realize that this is a, perfect now. This is a little indefinitive, but I would support a temporary moratorium on these projects. I think the word indefinite is a little scary. Uh, it's a, it doesn't have closure. It has too much closure to it. I think we, we don't know as a, as a world, as a town, as a city, what to expect in 5, 10, 15 years. So to, to just label something indefinite, it's just, it, it's just a little scary. Um, I am definitely against some of the... Um, Outlandish projects, but where they make sense and where we can hold balance, where, where we can balance progress with preservation, I think we should take advantage of those opportunities. I'm in favor of the, the single stories and two story houses. I'm not in favor of the, all the condominiums that are going up, but we need to get the comprehensive plan together and just keep it delivered to where it is. Uh, I'm not in favor of a moratorium, but I'm in favor of. Uh, responsible development and uh, more single-family homes the river flats uh, project is got some good things so it's a little on the big side for how I look at it um, uh, it has good opportunities for uh, apartments and even better opportunities for single-family homes and even other properties in the in the city here could benefit from uh, single-family homes um, I don't think one size fits all is a good solution for very many problems. I agree with Rick, we need to look at each project individually. We also need to consider their um, impact as a, altogether on the community, but I think projects deserve to be considered on their own merits. Um, we have a, some housing, but I've heard from many younger folks that they can't afford to live here. They grew up here, they'd like to live here to be close to their family, but they can't afford it. And they would like to be able to rent an apartment that they could afford. And so I think that's an important consideration as well. So density is definitely a concern. Um, our roads alone, we don't have enough room to expand our roads within the historic area. Um, having these high rises go around is not ideal but we also need to take into consideration we have people who own this land and they would definitely like to develop it and make some money and there's some fixing up that needs to be done. So we have to take that all into consideration. Um, the Lucan Drive I think would be great. Uh, it's uh, farther on the other side and it can handle the traffic. Over here on the historic side, it's definitely a concern that we don't have room to expand our roads. So I definitely would love to have single family homes, would like to have townhouses, um, but uh, the main thing is the roads right now. We just can't handle what we have today. Um, 
I wouldn't support indefinite moratorium. Um, I would consider a thoughtful approach to uh, a long-term planning and review of our comprehensive plan um, so we can better understand and kind of be strategic about um, decisions that, that we need to make in future. You know, create that vision for ourselves. Uh, you know, what we want our downtown to look to and respond, you know, what we want, you know, um, some of the areas that are not part of historic town to um, kind of look like. So if elected, I'll make sure that I carefully study all the reports that are, you know, brought up with, in front of us, all the studies, all the community uh, input, uh, so that um, we can make decisions based, based on based on the data, data points, because that's what I do for a living. I'm a, I'm a data analyst, so um, I study millions of data points every day to create a recommendation for people. So. I think uh, we can't just, you know, we have to create that balanced, balanced living arrangement for our, for ourselves uh, in this community. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the public we received would be, what would you suggest as the best ways to attract businesses to the city of Newcastle, and how would you balance? the needs of different constituencies as you seek to do so. I'm gonna start this time with Mr. Zupaka and again ask everyone to respond within one minute. Um, I think our city is very lucky um, to have so many community partners uh, involved uh, um, in, in our city. You know, just, it's, it's, it's a thriving and vibrant community, I think. Um, we have some you know, uh, history, arts, uh, um, natural beauty, fine dining, entertainment that, you know, not a lot of places can be proud of. Uh, so it, it really, it really, you know, um, I, I think that we should maximize our relationship with the existing partners to the, to the city, uh, and we should definitely look for external funding where possible to, to help our businesses, to help our uh, museums um, uh, to, you know, renovate or, or you know, uh, help them be in business because we have some jewels. Uh, jewels in our town. So, um, if elected, um, I'm, I'm absolutely going to be looking to um, gather more external funding uh, to help our businesses. So, uh, I definitely agree. I think funding is key. I think there's funding from the state that we might be able to get to get more businesses to come into our town. They're doing it all the time. Um, I actually, like I said, I work at Sally May, um, and they helped us out with a big, huge company. I think get for small businesses uh, and also we have lots of different organizations within our community and if they can help out and let others know about it we are very unique to have all these businesses these restaurants we have some open areas that we can get some other things in so I think uh, it helps our property values everything that we can do to get other uh, businesses in here so that uh, people can do things um, and not have to leave I love on a Friday afternoon. I come home, I can stay all weekend, and I don't have to do anything. Don't have to get in the car, but everything is right here. We have a wide variety of businesses from the restaurants in our downtown to the various businesses in, our, in the industrial parks all through nine. But if we want to attract more business, I think we have to look at the big picture. And saying no to any further multifamily housing units does not exactly encourage business to come here because where are the employees going to live? So that's why I say one size doesn't fit all. If we want to attract business, we should go for it. If there's grants, whatever we can do to promote the city and attract businesses is good, but we have to look at the whole picture. Uh, well, if you look at downtown Newcastle, there's not a lot of extra property to it to put extra businesses in. Um, so I would kind of focus on marketing uh, the city so that the ones that are still in the city thrive and can do well and plan events that they can build off of and a, and a profit from. Um, the other places where it, it would be great if we had a, a, a grocery market somewhere closer than Food Line and ShopRite, but um, I would like to see at least the ones that are still in the city now maintain their profitability and stick around for a long time, because I enjoy going there. Yeah, I agree. We need to find out why businesses are leaving. We have two empty now, the Arsenal and uh, the old, um, Pizza History. Um, 
the pizza history, the old booth house. We need to bring that back. If you go downtown, there's only Jessup down there and a couple others. I think this is a unique question that crosses into every question we're gonna have to answer tonight. Um, this town has, it's beautiful, uh, but it has some black eyes on it. There's a lot of closed businesses. I'm watching them as someone who supports them and, and helps them open their doors and gets them to that turnkey day. It's unfortunate that in such a little time they end up shuttering. I think we need to ask why. Why are they from what leaving? Why can't they sustain them, them, them themselves? I think to Mrs. Souter's point, uh, having, you know, if I was gonna open a business tomorrow, I would go where there's the most profitability, the most excitement, the most interest. If we're putting up a barrier per se and not letting new people in, how are we attracting business to open their doors? Um, I've worked a lot with the businesses in town and have, the sentiment is it's hard to get people in. There's not a lot of walk build. There's there's not a lot of foot traffic. You know, this is the most walkable town I've ever been in, and I have to drive everywhere. Why is that? And we want to complain about traffic. I'm on the road 10 more times a day than I should feel like I should be. I can't get a lemon anywhere. I can't get a gallon of milk that's not a Walgreens. I think that's kind of crazy. Um, I should be able to get some cheese, some meat, some bread. Um, I don't want to have to go bother Joe at Port Vinos for a line because I can't find any at the IGA by the bridge. That's kind of crazy to me. So I think we should remove ourselves from this high level approach and really just get down to what we can do today, tomorrow, and next week. I'll be honest with everybody here. I'm gonna leave this all this up to these guys. We got enough businesses in Newcastle now, and when they're done building apartment buildings, where are you gonna put all these new businesses at? We must work on the comprehensive plan and make change. And then we can live our lives long. Thank you. All right, to keep with the topic of development and promotion of the city, uh, over the last couple of years, Council has, uh, in fits and starts, been working towards hiring a person to promote the city, a tourism and economic development coordinator. Uh, that has gone back and forth with the city administration uh, and is currently um, looking for resumes once again from what I understand or perhaps about to be interviewed. What are your thoughts on whether the city needs someone in such a position or what ways the city would do best to try to promote itself to visitors? <coughs> well, look at this. Is Newcastle City has been around for a long time and we work just fine without all these extra people trying to interfere with putting things in our mind how we're supposed to live and all. I think a lot of the problem with the city now is we're bringing too many people into the picture. It's costing us a lot of money and we're not getting anywhere. Thank you. Again, I feel like this is very high level and we could just come down there and think about this. If you get someone at the right price with the right experience who can provide an ROI back to us, why not? There's no reason that we can't uh, hire someone at a decent wage, put their feet to the fire and say, help us make this town a better place. Um, that's not a big event. That's not crazy ask to, uh, to, to have. And I don't think that that's beyond anything that we need. I mean, this is a town that's built on its, its allure, its history, um, its creativity, its diversity. And I think a tourism director should just help us with all those, those, those things. I, I don't think that we're doing a good enough job that we can just say, we don't need that. I, I, I'm open for that person if it's the right person. I totally agree on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the, that's the short answer. Yeah, I totally agree also. Uh, I think the I think the person that becomes the tourism director can wear a couple different hats, help the businesses, help the city government, help promote uh, uh, tourism into the area, get to see all the great little places that, that are being built around here and the history in this comp uh, this place, the Calhoun Nickel and all the all the cool things that you other little cities our size don't really have. So I, I would I would be in favor of that. Well the, the position that was approved by council last year was a one year position. It is not a permanent city job. And it was with some of our money from the COVID so called COVID money, the ARPA funds. Um, there was money for to pay the person, and 
and then there was some additional money allocated towards expenditures on things like building a website, producing brochures, that sort of thing. Um, the idea was to kickstart the, the tourism and kind of regain what we lost during COVID, and there have been some bumps in the road of getting the right person on board, but it is moving along. I don't know, I have a different view of this, but we have lots of organizations within this community. We have the Newcastle um, Partnership. That they have an amazing brochure. They do a lot of this stuff already today. So if we can get this position up and running, if we can get that person to connect the different organizations, pull these different resources together, it would be very successful. And you're still like, uh, words out of my mind. Yeah, as I already just uh, mentioned, you know, our city is very lucky to have so many community partners uh, organizing events throughout the year. I don't necessarily need, think that we need way more events that we already have. I think we have a nice spread throughout the year and, a, you know, kind of great, great um, uh, influx of, of tourists in town. Um, and I think this position is very much needed uh, to do just what Andrew explained, you know, to connect our SAPA, to connect historical society, the, you know, uh, to connect the Newcastle Community Partnership and um, so, so they can utilize each other's efforts, lean on each other. Uh, we can, you can go ahead you know, and apply for those grants together and see what we need um, and you know, if we need to add more uh, flavor uh, you know, throughout our calendar. Um, but this person can promote our tourism, right? So I think that there is a need for this position to promote, uh, to highlight our many exciting events that we have uh, going on in our businesses. And I just wanted to say that I would, to this point, uh, I would intend to streamline and modernize um, city forms to make it as uh, efficient as possible to reduce administrative burden for our partner businesses um, and residents. Thank you. Thank you. All right, to shift topics a little bit. One of the core uh, duties of council that each of you will undertake if elected, is uh, selecting and confirming residents to serve on our local utility, the Municipal Services Commission, as well as other boards and commissions that serve the city. What would you look for in finding and nominating residents to serve the city in such capacity? A lifelong resident or someone that's been here for quite a while and has experience in the field, and uh, that's kind of our question. I'm going to pass it on. Um, I'm a big fan of merit. I think merit speaks volumes. I'm not for appointing people to positions because they fit a certain, um, I, a certain need. I think that the best people should sit in the, in the best seats, um, and that these people should embody the culture, embody the town, embody the growth, embody the preservation, um, and have a good outlook and a positive outlook and want to see this, the city succeed and see the city grow because it's inevitable it's going to have to grow to sustain itself. Um, and I would hope to see people fill this position that are residents that have a unique background in the way of serving on certain seats and in certain committees and having given their time to the city and its people at different points in, the, in their past. Again, I think resume, merit, and experience uh, speak volumes. I like to see most of our residents get on the committees because we have a lot of committees that none of the residents want to get on, but we need to get our residents on the committees. Yeah. Uh, it, it would actually be better uh, if people would want to come to the council to be involved in the city and then have the council go after people to serve. Um, but as a longtime resident, I, I know a lot of people, I know a lot of people's talents, and, and the, the, the only trick is to try to sell them to get involved. And once you can do that, you'll find out you can probably put pretty good committees together all, you know, all through the city um, government. Um, I agree with with what Rick said, we need to match skills to the needs of the various committees. I mean, the municipal services is a little more straightforward. It's good to have people with experience with utilities, water and electric, and with financial management. The other boards and commissions, you know, you're not going to find too many city planners living in the city, certainly not enough to fill out the planning commission. So beyond that, you need people with interest and a diverse perspective 
diverse perspectives on that commission to represent the various attitudes around town. I mean, obviously within us, there are different attitudes towards development, towards business promotion and so forth. And I think all of those perspectives need to be represented on our boards and commissions as well as all the various neighborhoods and parts of our city. Passion and experience. I definitely will go back to passion. I think people want to get involved. So we want people to be part of our community and help out with the different committees. Um, sometimes people don't know how to get involved. Um, they don't want to come up to us or anything like that. So again, go back to our website. If we could create some kind of forum on it that if you're interested to say uh, what different committees you might be interested in, what your experience is, things like that, that you would have a pool of people to assist us so that we'd be able to go out, talk with them, and see how they can help out. Um, I believe that we can help our city prosper by kind of, like I said, you know, leaning on each other's expertise and experiences um, and strengths, um, and you know, identifying people to serve commissions and boards will be one of the most important tasks if I'm elected uh, council person. Um, I believe these positions should be filled with a healthy mix of expertise, uh, privacy in decision making, and um, like Rick and uh, Suzanne said, commitment to serve, right? So uh, in the best interest of the residents of the city. get back to basics with uh, one of the first questions we received from the public. Uh, if you are elected, what would your number one priority be as council person that you would focus on above all else? I'm going to start at the other end this time. Um, I think I already said that in my opening regard. Uh, I think just increasing transparency of the city um, and trying to increase the engagement of the of all uh, neighborhoods in the city will be utmost priority. So maybe a little bias, living on 6th Street, <laughs> but traffic. Um, we get hit hard on Fridays and Sundays. 95 has an accident. Um, uh, like 6th Street, 7th Street, there's just not enough room. So if we could fix a lot of the traffic signs to divert people other directions, with the GPS systems, if we can get them diverted to other areas, specifically the tractor trailers that don't fit on our roads, um, that would be the main things I would like to do. As I said, I would um, focus a lot on the sea level rise task force, keep them moving, make sure they get the support they need, and try to preserve the um, ARPA funds until we know how much that would cost. Um, and that, that's my primary focus at this point. Yeah, I think one thing's kind of tricky. I mean, um, I would think that if you can focus on more responsible development, uh, encouraging more single family homes and developing neighborhoods, you'll develop better communities that maybe can get people to get involved, to want to serve and, and volunteer and that. And if you do that, then maybe some of your traffic problems can kind of, well, well, get better, or at least not worse. <laughs> if I get elected, I'm going to work for the citizens of Newcastle. Also, uh, piggyback on what Andrew said, the traffic problem on 6th Street, we definitely have a traffic problem. I seen the other day, seven cars run the stop sign to 6th and Delaware, and uh, 6th and Tremont. So I'm still learning the powers that the city council has and doesn't have, but what really upsets me about the town currently is the shuttered businesses, um, the heart and soul and effort that goes into getting them open, getting them staffed, getting the menus made, getting the product on the shelves, six months to a year closed. Um, I, that is my focus. I, I don't, I'm, again, I don't know how we can dictate someone's business management, that's not our, our position, but to be there to support them. Uh, working with the county, working with maybe Wilmington, working with the state, how do we piggyback off of some of their marketing efforts, how do we drive more business here. Maybe not the way of building condos, but getting the 150 cars that come in front of Andrew's house on a Friday in a 30 minute window. How do we get some more of those people to park, spend some money, keep our businesses open? Yeah.
Once again, people, I'm going back to the comprehensive plan. I want the residents of Newcastle City to have a say in what goes on in this town. And with this present comprehensive plan, you have absolutely no say in what's being built here. It must be changed and we must come together. All this talk of new developments and bringing all our businesses are fine. What do you got? 400 antique stores on Delaware Street and three restaurants. What are these businesses everybody's talking about? Please, someone tell me. You have to change your comprehensive plan and your zoning ordinance to protect yourselves and have a say on what goes on in this town. Thank you. Several of you mentioned concerns around traffic. Let's stick with that topic. Um, the stop sign at 6th and Delaware was recently made permanent uh, following uh, the study by DelDOT and approval by our council. Um, there are impending changes coming to uh, intersections around town as a result of the MAPCO transportation plan potentially over the coming decades. Something the council keeps running into is that council has very little direct control over the streets though because most of them are state owned. What strategies would you use to work with our state delegation and other partners to bring resolution or temporary relief to some of the traffic issues you see in town? Well, first of all, I'd have to find out exactly how many roads and state owns in the city of Newcastle because I don't think they own that many. Maybe on the outskirts, the ferry cut off and things like that. And they're going to fix that regardless of what we do. That's their job. But um, I got off track here. What was your question again? I'm really sorry. What would you do to help the state prioritize that stuff, the, the projects that are coming? As are there things you would do in time to help the traffic? Well, what I see going on with the state is they take their time in working with the people. A lot of these things around our roadways should have already been done. I mean, we keep full with this Wilco, whatever it's called, the planning committee that does all the planning. If you people would put a catch basin behind the Francis Hospital, you solve your whole water problem at the ferry cutoff. And you fix your roads yourself. You ain't gotta listen to all these people and take your streets away from you and all that. Put pressure on the state of Delaware, just below Dobbinsville. That there could be a brand new road there that people would take the time and sit down and study it. The trustees of Newcastle Common, the city of Newcastle and the state would work together. In two thousand in nineteen ninety-two they put that bridge below Dobbinsville. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, guys, but you, you better listen. <laughs> so I think that we should work on identifying where change has happened and look to mirror it, look to ask for help. I don't think we can solve some of these problems just within this neighborhood. I think that we should rely on the county and the state and hold their feet to the fire with the areas that they do own and the areas that they do manage. I think that we all know that the state has no problem working on roads. Every single artery is always being worked on. Why don't we piggyback on some of that, get some of that funding this way, get some of that interest this way, and really own this town's presence as the heart of the state, even though it's technically not the middle of it. In, in my opinion, it's the prettiest town in the state, and we should leverage leadership and funding towards bettering our roads if that's deemed a big enough problem. Again, I think we need to find something, an example where this has worked and try to copy it and pressure our leaders for that funding because I think we're all kind of at, at odds on, on who's responsible for it. Um, identifying who is, uh, I think, could, could give us some answers. Yeah, we need to work with our state leaders legislators to go poor and even brown and tell them we have a traffic issue in their town that they need to help us and step up to the plate. You know, the, the traffic issues in this town don't really have really simple or inexpensive uh, solutions. Um, years ago, I thought, well, for my own neighborhood, 
I'll make Washington Street one way this way, we'll make 6th Street one way that way, and then I don't have the racetrack in front of my house. Uh, but that all that does is make it more annoying for all our other neighbors uh, at my expense. And so we can't really do that. Um, Del Dot has to be able to um, come up with some kind of solution. And of course, I, I've already said this a couple times, how we, how we propose uh, new development will keep it from getting worse and maybe even help. Well, the council has been working with um, Senator Poor, Representative Brown, and Representative Cook. Um, the problem is that we're not the only town in Delaware. And every town thinks their town is the most important yeah. and should have all the money to fix all their problems. Well, we kind of have to share. Yeah. <laughs> so we've been trying, for example, to get the repairs to Route 9 south of town to um, moved up on the Del Dot agenda because of the severe flooding there. I think we've gotten it pulled a few years closer, but it's still quite a bit out there. Um, it's not a simple solution. There's no one you know, quick fix, magic bullet that's going to do it. Um, so we have to just keep plugging away and work with our representatives. And we do have to work with WOMAFCO because if they don't devise a plan, Del Dot's not going to do anything without the WOMAFCO plan as the starting point. So we can't just say, well, forget WOMAFCO, because then nothing will happen. So I attended those meetings from WOMAFCO. I guess that was during the COVID times, and they were all Zooms. And um, they were very interesting. People got to vote on different um, options. Um, some of the options were good, some of them were not. But uh, these are for the future. They're not for today. So I think we need some temporary solutions to fix the issues that we have. We need to be talking to our representatives. We need to talk to Del Dot. We need accountability. I think we should have some continual meetings with them and be able to see what we can do from a temporary solution to fix our situation and understand the long term, like what year or century are they looking to do some of these things? Tough question, yeah, right. <laughs> um, I think traffic you know, issues are, are, are just not one of those that can be solved overnight. Um, I mean, I think concerns in general are not something, you know, city government is not a, uh, or government in general is not something that, you know, operates at a, you know, okay, I'm gonna put a patch right now, and then we're gonna have something better tomorrow, right? Uh, it's just, there's always gonna be a list of priorities, and to um, Suzanne's uh, point, you know, there's, you know, we're in a lock, right? With other, we're competing with other places, and you know, the, the, the Sixth Street sign was, you know, top 10, you know, in, in the state, right, for Delta. And we're trying to put other projects there uh, like that. Our playground took two years. You know, so like we have to put things in perspective, right? Um, I encourage everybody to read Will Mopko's plan. I think it's 52 pages. It was just issued in December of 2022. I mean, sorry, October. It's amazing some of the recommendations that came out of it. I'm very excited. Can't wait for those to happen because I truly believe that we will have a quality of life that we deserve here with better traffic uh, coming in. And I, I just want to urge it. Sorry, sorry for going over time again. Um, that I know that change is very difficult to adapt to, but we will definitely keep working with le legislators to make these changes push you know, a little farther as we can. Thank you. The one that we got the most uh, questions from this live audience about has to do with the uh, negative campaign going on in town. Um, I don't expect anybody up here to, you know, uh, talk about who is responsible, as, as some have suggested. But I, I would ask you all to respond to the idea of the tone set during a campaign and what is good for our town's democracy and for the process that we're all going through. And I'll start with Mr. Bryson. As far as the signs are concerned, I feel that it's very disrespectful for the candidates that it's against, and it's very disrespectful to every person in this town. I think most of us in there know who put the signs out, so there's no need for me to tell you. It's, it's a solo person. I didn't like the point that Mr. Smith used in that such plural when he put his article in the paper. We all know who did this, and it's very wrong, 
and we should come up with some sort of ordinance to make sure it never happens again. Thank you. I don't know that I'm a fan of an ordinance barring any of that because, I mean, it's our, it's our freedom of speech. I mean, unless something's glaring and completely uh, slandering, I, I, it's, you know, all is fair. Uh, love and war, but I don't think that the petty side that we've all seen is is reflective of who we are as people. I think that's just the natural byproduct of a, of a political uh, cycle. Unfortunately, I feel bad for the names that are mentioned. I don't think they're fair. Um, I think the the women that are on those signs are, are great people. I, I don't think they, they deserve to be talked about that way. I don't think we need to head to one side of town and the other and see their name be mentioned in a negative way 45 times. I think we get the point. Whoever's putting the signs out, we get it. Uh, every day there's like 10 more. I mean, it's kind of crazy. Um, but I don't think, I just think that's just part of the cycle whether you agree with it or not. I totally agree with that. We're all adults here. We need to grow up and act our age. <laughs> We know who put the signs out, but he won't show his face around town. <laughs> yeah, uh, considering the source is really not that big of a slight to uh, Miss, Miss Souter or Miss Leary, so uh, consider it, you know, uh, free promotion. Um, well, certainly I don't like the signs. I think the person has the right to express their opinion. Yeah. I'm sorry that the choice is to make it a negative opinion instead of telling us who the person would support instead of just being negative against the people the person doesn't want to support um, but that's was the choice that was made i think he needs another beer <laughs> so uh the negativity um i'm not not in favor of that at all um to be honest i think it's very sexist uh, there's only two women running and uh, those are the signs for them, and it's just, it's just not right. Um, I understand free speech. I was like, oh, we really need to take them down, and my son goes, it's free speech. So uh, definitely, um, please don't do that. And then you have situations of, uh, besides the signs, people are taking signs down, and that's uh, an issue as well. So we need to make sure, if you see that, take a picture of them, send it in. Yeah, just uh, around the room, you know, sentiment, you know, goes out for two, you know, two candidates who, you know, we see the sign, and just today, to Ethan's point, I saw more, and I'm like, <laughs> it's just crazy to keep seeing more and more. We, we've got the message. I think everybody has seen the signs uh, at this point. Um, I, I, at my core, I do believe that we should all be treated with dignity and respect, especially public servant. Um, and, and I think we should, you know, um, that is should, that should be our conduct, how we treat each other as residents, you know, and how we should move forward with any topic that we're discussing. You know, we should we can disagree on things, you know, but, but we, we should still show respect for each other and you know to move the you know their their communication and you know further to, to whatever that might be. So coming here hopefully um, in a couple of weeks as a your council person, uh, I hope that we can have healthy conversations about anything, and after that we can even disagree, grab a beer, you know. Just, just be neighbors, you know, that's fine. You know, we are adults, like Rick said, you know, it's fine to disagree, but you know, we're unique people because of that. All right, the next question is about our host organization tonight, the Senior Center. Uh, this was submitted by a couple of folks, and I'm going to read one of them. Uh, Directly, she provides some great context. Friday, I learned that the primary care medical practice here at the Senior Center is going to close. I think this is a catastrophic development for seniors in the city. The 2020 census showed that we have 5,551 residents in the city, and of that number, 20.6% are over 65. This means approximately 1,144 seniors will no longer have access to medical care within walking distance. We have no doctors in town, which is why the Senior Center was expanded 16 years ago to address this shortfall. If you are elected, how would you try to remedy this problem and what strategies would you use to do so? <laughs> start the right. Does anybody want to take this one? I'll take a stab at it. Okay. 
Well, first I'd want to know why the existing practice left. Yeah. Um, and are there problems we can solve? Uh, maybe it was the retirement of that physician. I don't, I don't know. Um, and obviously that's not a problem for us to solve. It's simply finding another practice to come in. Uh, we could see if we could partner with Christiana Care, St. Francis, uh, one of, if at a minimum perhaps we could arrange for the mobile van that St. Francis has um, to come here, although they serve uh, the, primarily the uninsured. Um, but you know, just see what else is out there that might be willing to at least have a part-time practice here. And just off the top of my head, those are the things that come to mind. Anyone else? Um, it's something similar to Suzanne's uh, point. I think, uh, I think, as a resident, I always wanted to have urgent care in town. But you know, to Hinton's point earlier, he was saying, you know, I'm learning about council persons, you know, duties and powers of the council. And you know, one of the things is these these places, unfortunately, private businesses. So there's not much. You know, you can encourage people to come to town and open their business, but you can't say, oh, we want a hospital here, right? So so it's still going to be a market research for that place to. To determine whether they, but I was thinking the same thing, you know, whether somebody would be willing to come one or two, two or three th days a, a week here, to, you know, and offer that clinic, you know, um, at Senior Center or whatever is the most convenient place. Um, and I don't know ways to do it, but definitely, you know, if I was elected, I would look, you know, how we can explore the, those opportunities to, to bring people in here. The only thing I can really add to that is um, if they are leaving and our seniors need rides, we do have paratransit within uh, Delaware that would be able to assist. As, uh, as someone who, I was not aware of that issue next door, um, and as someone with two um, 55 and over parents who rely on like care, um, that's devastating to hear. Um, I would encourage, if we can't immediately find a, a, a tenant or a, a, a complete fix of the solution, that we encourage a shuttle service or something to make a few stops around town uh, to take people to areas, hospitals, um, places that they're comfortable at, doctors of their choice, um, that kind of, of service uh, in the interim. I would hate to leave anybody in need of care stranded. That's just sad. All right, thank you. Another topic that a lot of your questions focused on, uh, no surprise, was development. Uh, you touched on that a bit in part one. Um, and I want to do a couple things. I want to ask a, try to get a yes or no question out of the candidates um, on one of these development projects, the one that we've um, seen the most of so far. Uh, Based on what you know about it right now, would you vote to give final approval to the development going, being proposed for Lucan's Drive, the river, the flats at River's Edge? I don't feel this development behind Lucan's Drive would bring any harm to this community whatsoever. And we would get a lot of much needed revenue to work where we could possibly make changes to a lot of plans they have in the southern at the town. The traffic from the Lucas Drive project will be very limited traffic in the city of Newcastle. And the revenue that's involved, we can't pass it up. Because people, with everything that's going on right now in this country, every piece of ground up the Lucas Drive is going to get developed all the way to the parole office. So why don't we get our share of revenue? It's a real simple deal. It's all virgin ground. But what I will ask on that project is that the developer, before that moves forward, bring that river shore up to the 2050 predicted floodplain. That's part of the deal for allowing him to bring this community into our town. And that will save us from doing it later on down the road. And that will be a big stretch of Newcastle property that will be brought up to the 2050 floodplain. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, no, as proposed, I would say no. I would say yes. Um, 
It's land that's going to be developed. It's currently zoned light industrial. If we don't change the zoning from light industrial to the requested mixed use residential, we're gonna get warehouses. And so that may be more car traffic for housing, but there will be more truck traffic, including tractor trailers, if it's warehouses. So for that reason, yes. And in terms of the other two, I don't know that they're going to come before council because they're not requesting a zoning change. Uh, definitely uh, yes. Uh, we have our comprehensive plan, and if we're going to ask for development and things like that, it's the best place to put it. It's the least amount of impact to our community. You're giving us a microphone and asking us to say yes or no. We're uh, <laughs> <laughs> candidates for city council. Yes, uh, I think as proposed right now, yes, with a little caveat, and I know that's you know silly to say. You know, I would still like to know a little bit more about environmental study there, um, and you know, if there's any concerns. Um, and, and also just to see a studies of, uh, done elsewhere in the country where we have had a mixed use like that, you know, industrial, heavy industrial, and then, you know, residential, just what does that do to quality of life? So, but, but as proposed right now, I would see, you know, it, it's kind of an example of, this is Ann's point, you know, like it's zoned in a certain way right now. So, yes. um, example of 7th Street, you know, initially I was leaning to decline that proposal if I was ever able to vote on it, but my opinion evolved significantly when I learned what else could be built there in the current zoning, right? So we have to be aware of, you know, what we're zoning through with the plan, and that leads me to that point, you know, we have to, as a council, sit down, work with the planning commission, and, you know, try, try to see, you know, like, uh, review our plan again, and, and try to envision what we want our future to look like, and how, how we want our city to look. I told you guys how important change in the comprehensive plan, so just don't misunderstand my views of what I want to do and become council. This project up at the Lucas Deal Drive is so far out of our way, it's right on the edge of town. And trust me, the change in the comprehensive plan is for this immediate downtown area. Thank you. Be prepared for a Buttonwood Avenue flight. All right, thank you all. Uh, sticking with the topic of development, uh, a couple of folks wanted to know with new developments potentially coming to town and us trying to attract more visitors to town with each passing year, where is everybody supposed to park? Um, what are your thoughts on the parking situation in town, if there are areas that should be added or uh, changed. And this will be for candidates who wish to respond. Does anybody want to start with it? Um, I spoke to someone, uh, I spoke to a few people, and I think there's a, there's some, a good idea to have um, a parking lot. Uh, there's an extra space in town that could be used for a parking lot, and that's on the, the north end of, this, of the immediate town here, where uh, MSC is on that street. I think you could have some um, parking spaces, you could have some Tesla hookups for electric vehicles. Um, that area of town's sort of an eyesore in a way, and it's sort of the gateway to uh, that, that to where we are. Uh, I think we can beautify it a little bit. Not that asphalt makes anything look better, but um, there's some unused space there. That it, it, sometimes the day there's random cars parked, it looks a little shady. I think if we put some lights and some parking spaces, some electrical hookups, uh, again, you can get more people to town to spend some money. So I had the pleasure of sitting for four hours at the adjustment meeting the other day. Um, it was very interesting. So I don't know where the number comes from. I don't know where it's at, how we can change it, but there's a number of 1.5 for parking space per unit. That is not enough. It does not meet the needs of the people today. Um, usually units got two cars, if not more. And then people visit. There's not enough parking for the development. Um, uh, to be honest, I'm not sure what's going on with the 7th Street. They switched it from 32 <coughs> to 24 units, but I don't know if they're changing the parking. If they're keeping the existing, it will it will be fine there. But if they're going to reduce the parking, uh, 7th Street is going to have issues. We need to get that addressed. Um, yeah, I think the couple of points that I already mentioned, uh, I was had 
joy to sit in a board adjustment meeting for several hours as well. And uh, 1.5 uh, parking space per unit was one of the things that I wanted to see how we can explore to change uh, uh, more dynamically when it comes to you know the amount, the, the size of an apartment, right? One bedroom versus two, three or more, right? Depend, you know, because uh, to somebody's point, you know, I, I don't think that a huge development should be happening in the historic part of the town. A, there's not even space, first of all, but you know, to the bigger developments that are happening outside, like Lucan's Drive, you know, there should be appropriate amount of spaces, but especially in town, we should add even more. So we should, in our, you know, in our, you know, regulations, we should kind of specify different areas, different zones, and you know, progressively move the, move those coefficients uh, throughout. Um, so, so absolutely uh, support our garage as well, and maybe even you know several forest garages that's kind of looking historical that, that would fit in the town that, that would house some of these some of these things as well. Is a resident here from Buttonwood, ma'am? Or sir, I'm sorry I can't see what you're the mask on. I meant no harm, but my speech about the drive. Buttonwood Drive is not supposed to be used as an entry point to the best of my knowledge. Now what happens in the future, I don't know. We'll have to fight to make sure that road stays closed. If your road was far as an entry point to that new development, I would be totally against it. And I mean that. Thank you. Any other responses on those issues? Another issue that comes with a growing town in one way or another is the need for services also to grow. A uh, couple questions have uh, a focus on the city's facilities. And in recent years, uh, council has been briefed by Newcastle City Police regarding certain security concerns about uh, meeting at the Old Town Hall, which is why meetings have now moved here. There have been concerns raised about uh, both the security and the uh, level of modernity of our current city offices. What approach do you favor uh, in terms of seeking new space or refurbishing old spaces where possible or a mix thereof to try to address these challenges. And I'm gonna start down the Z end this time. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this is a heated debate too. Uh, you know, everything kind of is controversial nowadays and that's good, uh, that's the part I like. You, you know, there's a, a healthy debate about all these topics and I, I'm appreciating every point of view my point of view, and as I mentioned earlier, is to make uh, this historic part even more walkable and more sustainable. So um, I would vote no to move the municipal building um, outside of our town. So I would explore options of, um, you know, refurbishing that building and, and try try to try to have as many. You know, I'm looking to add, you know, businesses and services like groceries, like mentioned earlier. You know, or even a, you know, healthcare uh, to town, so that our citizens can walk out of their house and not have to, you know, drive. You can just walk, walk, you know, get coffee, get lunch, get dinner, go to our doctor, uh, you know, enjoy the park, you know, whatever you want to do on a you know, Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday afternoon. So I am not in favor of a municipal building. Um, I like the current locations we have. I think they need to be retrofitted. Um, anything for ADA, um, exit situations, whatever they need to do, I think there's funding for that that we should fix that up that will keep our small town on field. Um, I did hear of a complaint that uh, some people, on, maybe on the outskirts, when they come in, they can't find parking, which is, of course, we have a parking issue sometimes. But if we could even put up signs in front of the, our municipal buildings and say um, five, ten minute parking, because most of the time that's all they're here for. They're here to get something, pick something up, and they're moving on to help out to get people in and out. Um, I agree, I'm not in favor of jumping into a new municipal complex. I think this building works fine for our meetings. It's largely empty in the evenings. There are some things we could add to it to make it more amenable. For example, I too was at that four hour board of adjustment meeting. There was a lot of interest in that meeting. The room was very full, but if, if we'd have had it in this building, no one could have seen the slides 
and the, the, the information that was presented. So we need to work with the senior center to perhaps get an AV system in here so that presentations such as that can be made and the senior center could use it during the day for their programming. So that would be one thing. And, and in terms of the office on Delaware Street, it, there are definitely some security concerns there for the staff and I think we need to address those. And council did authorize money for and in the beginnings Sorry. of an investigation of what would have to be done and how much it would cost so that we know how to proceed. Uh, first of all, uh, with public services and, and with the proposed um, development up in Lucas Drive, uh, as you're well aware, uh, trash business is an expensive deal here. Uh, I am in favor of keeping the city employees involved in the trash selection, but up where that new development could be, if it could be scaled down a little bit, thought out a little thoroughly, um, it's a good chance to privatize some of the trash business that we will probably have to um, look at in the future. Um, as far as the uh, city building, I'm actually in favor of building a new city building. I think the building on Delaware Street would be an incredible opportunity for another diverse business, whether a restaurant, uh, a brewer, uh, art studio, uh, or even a visitor center. Uh, my wife was out the other day and there was a young lady and her uh, son looking for a place to go to the bathroom. And something like that would be you know, a perfect opportunity to, to welcome people into the city. I'm in favor of keeping the municipal services where it's at and keeping the current the city administration building where it is. It's easy access for the residents of Newcastle to walk to and you can speak to uh, council people. Uh, from my point of view, there's an accessibility problem, both from the information side and the actual physical side. Uh, it seems to me, it seems that I'm hearing this room is, does not suffice, the police station does not suffice, no one's happy anywhere. Um, I'm actually in favor of a campus of, of sorts um, on the north side of town where we could have multiple uses under one roof, bathrooms, we could meet, the town could meet, we could have meetings, uh, you could have rental space uh, as a way to turn that actually into some revenue for the town. Um, so I'm in favor of that. I'm not seeing the manifestation in there, but. I think most residents of Newcastle realize and know already my stance on this issue. Newcastle is what it is because of who we are and the buildings we have. We start taking our history away, and then who are we? We don't need a new administration building. People get a little bit of extra money, and they're like kids, they want to hurry up and spend it all, you don't have it anymore. Mm -hmm. I'd say we put the work into these buildings, make them safe for the staff, and forget about administration building. We don't need it. Thank you. services were mentioned uh, specifically other than the city facilities by folks who gave questions tonight one of those is the city police force and whether it needs to be expanded to deal with a growing or changing population and the other is again MSC our local utility and whether you think there are any changes needed with it to better serve the population when I listen to Mr. Cron to tell the people in Newcastle how you should tear your municipal service down on Chestnut Street and build townhouses, <coughs> then he told the people you ought to take your tennis courts and move them and build more townhouses. All you have to do with municipal services on Ch Chestnut Street is turn the building around and put it to the back of the parking lot, build them a new small building, and keep all your parking out in front. That's all that needs to be done there. There's no need, and the police station. The police station is brand new, people. It's brand new. What do they need a new facility for? They can take their gymnasium if they want to turn it into offices. I mean, we have a big gymnasium, and I'm, I'm pro cop. There's not nothing I won't do for a police officer. Not one thing I won't do for him. You do not need a new police department. You have a brand new police department, and I'm trying to figure out why we have air conditioners companies up there for two weeks every year. It's costing us a lot of money, people. 
Thank you. Um, for what I understand, we're down a couple cops in town. Uh, we should get those positions filled. Um, I think that we need to remember that there's a four lane major interstate called a 95 that runs through here that harbors all walks of life. Um, some good, a lot bad. Uh, those people can choose to hop off that ramp and be in our town with, with, within seconds. So I don't see any reason to cut back on police. Um, and if we need two more, we should get three. Um, and that's just kind of how I feel about the safety concerns here with that. Uh, as far as MSC goes, I think all the people in that office are great. I love the internet platform that they've, that they've adapted. Um, I've never had a problem with them. Um, if, if they need something, I'm in favor of giving it to them. I think they're, a, they're an awesome service. I like that it's in town. It's, it's very local. We're not outsourcing everything to somebody else. Um, so I'm in favor of think anything that they need as well. I totally agree with you. They don't have one. <laughs> yeah, I, I've also heard that there that the police department is funded for at least two more officers. If the development goes through up at the river flats, then they should be funded for two more on, on top of that. Uh, the police around the area, um, I think, do an excellent job. I mean. You can't pull up. You can't pull over enough speeders in this town. But if they had somebody just to do that, they could pay for probably six more officers. <laughs> um, yeah. Yes. Our police staff force is down. We were almost up to full strength, and then two officers left to go work with another municipal, other um, jurisdictions, and then I believe another one was called up for active duty National Guard, which isn't a permanent loss, but still. So yes, they are searching for the replacements for those who permanently left. Um, I was at the meeting where the chief was asked about new police officers that might be needed for Lucan's Drive, and he agrees two, we need two more, and the estimated cost for that is less than the estimated tax revenue that that will generate, so it, it should be covered. And just to throw this in for the trash, they say, the developer says in Lucan's Drive that of course for the rental units, they have to they're responsible for the trash. And the single family homes, they say, will be part of a maintenance compact and they will have private trash collection. Now that's a little problematic since they pay the same property taxes we pay, yeah, but right. that's the plan at this point. Yeah. So we'd have to look into that. I agree that our MSC does a great job since they buy their power off the grid. If we expand with the new developments and so forth, we're buying more power, but that gets our rates down because the unit cost goes down. So with uh, Luke and Drive, I know that they said we would need two more police. Um, that would actually not just cover Luke and Drive, they said it would actually cover the other developments that are happening within our town. Uh, what they also said, which was kind of neat, is that because we have a railroad in between, they could actually have a couple people, two cops on one side and two on the other. So when they have coverage, it wouldn't be such an issue. Um, if a train is coming by, we would have appropriate coverage, which is nice. Um, with what Suzanne said about trash removal, um, and even I think potential snow, they were looking at a maintenance corporation and Luke can drive. Um, that's a nightmare for them to go through this. I think that if they're paying taxes into our town, they really shouldn't have a maintenance corporation. To me, it's almost double taxation, which I don't think would be fair to them for the people that would be moving into Luke can drive. Thank you. Um, as it relates to police, I, I would definitely defer to uh, the chief and their reports um, if elected to um, you know how uh, make informed decision to you know Suzanne's point you know make sound sense to um, approve those two positions because you're seeing X amount X amount of uh, acres X amount of people um, jo joining um, joining our you know municipality so um, so it would uh, full support of police that do a, a fantastic job policing our town um, as as it relates to MSC and even city administrator. <laughs> building I, I do think that uh, you know we need to get a fully staffed and you know it, it, and listen to uh, if they need more people to uh, to operate uh, uh, in a way that they need to efficiently so uh, one of the things that I mentioned earlier I want to modernize some of the forms to allow you know uh, less you know for traffic issues you know for people not to have to come in person always to submit a form but you can submit it online but where possible so that we can reduce some of that congestion but also allow the administrators and you know in their offices to to process these things uh, you know on a computer instead of having to you know uh, do that in person
People, I'm very sorry, but I must have wax in my ears. I thought the question was the facilities, not the personnel. I am all for more cops. We don't have enough cops now. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying. All right. Uh, so we have time for one last question. It's going to be uh, somewhat, somewhat lighter one. Um, I'd like to give you each keep your response this time to 30 seconds, if you could. Uh, Newcastle is a river town, yet we have no access for public river traffic. What are your thoughts on allowing transit access to the new future pier or elsewhere in town? Well, part of the agreement when we put the pier up on the Delaware Street that there will be no recreation on the pier because of safety and insurance reasons. So I don't think using our war for a taxi cab or something like that would be real wise. A lot of people don't understand. A lot of these taxi cabs are in like canals, Christiana River, places like that. You go full with that Delaware River and you're full with something that you know nothing about. Thank you. I'm a fan of using the wharf and pier for accessibility to the river. I think if you look at towns like uh, Chesapeake City and um, you know, if, if every one of those people that go to the Chesapeake Inn or Schaefer's Canal House were to drive that town, would be overwhelmed. Uh, they get a lot of boat traffic and it takes a lot of pressure off the streets. Um, I think this town has a lot to offer from the river inward. Uh, and we should explore options on how to expand on growing the business there. I'm saying thing, I'm totally in favor of it. We need to get more boats in there. Yeah, a boat ramp will be really convenient for people that are boaters. It'd be actually, a, be kind of cool to have a uh, like a water taxi service that could ferry us just for the fun ride of it, like the Cape May Lewis, Lewis Ferry, only shorter version that takes us over to like Riverview Park and Pensville in that area. Um, but having having access into the river uh, for recreational boaters would be a plus for I think for the city. It's also got a little bit of a a, a drawback with you got to be able to park the truck and the trailer, then put the boat in the water somewhere also. So. Look, a little bit to think about. Um, I'm not a boater, but I've talked to some, and they say using the wharf for recreational boating would be very difficult because we have such a dramatic tidal change here. Yep. At low tide, you know, they couldn't get in and out. Yep. So that would make it difficult. Chesapeake City, I agree, the area along the canal is great and all the restaurants, but that's a canal. It doesn't have the dramatic tidal change that we have here in Newcastle. So. Maybe we can figure out some other ways to use the river as an attraction, but I don't think that recreational boating is one of them. So I'm not sure about recreational boating, but um, I know Wilmington has a river taxi. I think it would be kind of cool if we could get them to come down here. People like to bike, maybe not both directions. We've got the Jack Markell Trail. It could be a situation you can take the boat up to Wilmington and then they could ride their bike back. Um, but I think it'd be pretty neat that if we could get something like that to get people involved in connecting um, our cities, that would be great. I'm gonna be honest, I haven't, I haven't really spent time to think about this idea before. Um, so um, I, I would explore um, you know, benefits of, of, of this, but also you know, what will what be concerns, you know, like where do you park the boats? How do you park them if the tide is you know, one way or the other? So um, not a boat, uh, you know, not for it, but just would like to you know, conduct a study and see you know, um, how, you know, pros and cons and make a decision based on that. All right, with that, I'd like to thank all of our candidates for city council for taking part in tonight's forum. Let's...